Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you guys how to weave scale mail. So, I'm going to try to get you a different perspective here. You can see what's going on here in the video. Um, I'm going to start by opening a whole bunch of 16 gauge 3 16 bright aluminum rings. Now keep in mind the scale mail that we're weaving here, um, purely for decorative purposes, may be LARPing at the most, but the same concept would work if you were using um, welded or riveted rings or the uh, 16 gauge 5 16 or rather 5 16 size uh, split rings for if you wanted something with a little bit more armor factor to it. So you see, I just have a dish here that I'm actually just popping a bunch of open rings into. The way that I open my rings is I just grab like this and then wrench it open. So that gives you a pretty good idea of that. Now we'll start, these are the, I believe they're still the large rings from the ringboard.com. They're actually the manufacturers of these rings. So anybody else that you get your rings from that I'm aware of um, just purchases them from the ring board. Some folks do their own anodizing and different coloring effects on them. But for the most part, again, as far as I'm aware, um, the ring board is the only manufacturer of these rings. So to start the weave, I'm going to have three rings, scales, sorry, um, set up like this. I'm going to dump myself out some open rings. And I'm going to take one open ring, and there's a convex side and a concave side. So this is the outside, and this is the inside just for future reference. So we're going to thread it on and then thread another one on with the insides facing each other, the two convex sides. And then I'm going to close this ring. Now whenever I close a ring, I'm being very firm and stable on this side and pushing in with both hands. And so I'm going to set that down and you can actually open that up just like that. And so now I'm going to take a ring and I'm going to hook through like this and then I'm going to sit this ring down like that and I'm going to close it. So whenever you're working with it, it's just three rings strung so that whenever they're laying, they're all laying the same way. And if it helps you, you can take a piece of scrap wire or a paper clip in a contrasting color and hook it onto this center ring right here and that way it can kind of help you locate okay this one's the top <laughs> and in this tutorial I'm teaching how to make like diamonds or triangles out of scales um, we will address in other videos some different ways of getting it started but this is for a very specific project and this is honestly probably the most frequently used like the way I most frequently do scale mail but there's many different ways to do it as there are people to do it so to each their own so now you can see I have an extra set up of three more scales again with the convex side facing down and the concave side facing up so I'm going to hook this ring on like that. And I function a lot with my scales just laying down. So I'm coming in from behind with my ring and just closing it. And now I'm going to hook through this ring again. And I'm going to set a scale on it and close it. And now I'm going to hook through the scale that we just added. Like that. And I'm going to layer this scale that was already on there 
on top of it like this. If you're having difficulty with it, I recommend watching for a few steps and then trying your hand at it. I'm actually going to lower this down, this camera maybe a little bit more, and seeing if I can't bring it in a little closer because I really want you guys to get a really good idea from as many different angles as possible. And so now this ring, we're going to thread an open or this scale, sorry. Um, look at when I point and don't pay t too much attention to what I say. I'm um, going to hook it through just like this. And then I'm going to sit a scale onto that ring. And then I'm going to close. And so now from here, I'm going to position so that those three scales are sitting topmost compared to the other ones. Because this is incorrect. This is not what we're trying to do right now. What is correct is just bringing these scales to the front. And by front, I mean just to, to the front of our vision, to where we can see them fully. And then the next row one, two, three, four scales. And I'm going to take an open ring, hook it through the scale, set that down on the table. I use my finger to kind of stabilize and lift this one so that I can get the ring in. And then I'm going to close it. And now I'm going to thread this ring through that scale, add on a new scale, close it, and now we're going to come in, hook through the scale we just added, and hook through the next scale to the left that was already on there. So there you can kind of see the first and last in the row are always kind of like floppy weird. Um, but once you get these ones going, they kind of, they really stay there. And you can see that repetitive pattern really starting to form. Though there's hints of it right now. Give it a few more rows and it'll be very apparent, I think. So I've just continued that same pattern, and I'm going to position the scales out. Because it's also sometimes the rings will want to be sitting upright. I go ahead and tap that right down into place. And so now you can see we have these four. The next row is going to be five. And I'm actually going to set up a little, another camera ankle for you. Try to get a better perspective again. Okay, so now our next row is five scales. There's one, two, three, four, five. And I want to get a few more rings out. And I kind of keep them evenly distributed along the back edge here. That way, um, I just find it makes me feel like I'm working a little faster because I can just pick one up from over here whenever I'm on this end and I can pick one up from over there when I'm on this end. So I'm going to hook through this scale onto that ring and then I'm going to come and lay that scale onto the ring like that and I'm going to close it. I'm going to tilt 
this camera up just a little bit. There we go. <laughs> now I'm going to thread through this scale. And I'm going to set this scale onto that ring. A common mistake that I've seen folks do both in our classes as well as I've done whenever I lose my spot is I'll thread through here on this scale. Come on camera, get it together. Um, and instead of hooking onto this one like how we should, oh, that's why the camera's freaking out. It's because I didn't click record. This is why I do two cameras on. <laughs> Try again. Record. Okay, now I'm recording. So sometimes I'm going to re demonstrate this is what we're supposed to do. Sometimes instead of doing that, I'll accidentally just add another scale and kind of keep going. And it's like, oh no, that's not, that's not what we should have done. So if you feel like you've messed up or you're not certain, don't hesitate to go back and kind of redo it because I can tell you it's it's a lot easier to fix um, a misplaced ring or a misplaced scale now than what it is to go back rows and rows from now because um, that can be really complicated. So we're just hooking on and hooking on. And as with most things with the chainmail and everything, the more you do this, the better you will get at pattern rec recognition. So just hooking that ring on and then laying the scale on like that. Another thing, you don't want to lay it on like that because there's no getting it to lay the correct way. And that's why I kind of work with the convex side down and the concave side up is so I can just be consistent. I'm going to go through and line up the positioning of these scales, get all their rings laying nice and tidy. And so now, I mean, you can really see here, this is starting to look like something. <laughs> so let's do another row. So this row is five, so the next one will be six. Two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to come in again. And just start weaving in the rings. That click that you're hearing is my rings are just budded, but it's whenever I'm closing, I want them to overlap just a little bit so that I can get that clicking because I don't want anything to be able to slide in in between the ends of this ring. And I don't know, to me that's just a good practice to be in. Not everybody clicks their chain mail, so it's up to you. But um, a lot of the times I'll be weaving in kind of like poor light as well as like whenever we're on the road and stuff and um, really focusing on what I'm doing makes me really car sick. So I can still weave scale mail kind of by feel um, if I let the clicking happen, if that makes sense. Like, because I can go through and I can click it and I can touch it and make sure that it's good. Okay, so now putting on this last one in the row. So now... Um, we can start decreasing. And the way that I do that, because for this, if it were to just hang loose, like all these scales would just be flopping everywhere, I really like to decrease back down. So this row was six, so the next row is going to be five. I'm gonna get just a pinch more rings out. And so I'll hook through this one, just 
picking it up, tucking through like this, and then I'm going to set this ring on there and close. So I'm going to slide through that scale with this ring, bring this scale up and on top, and then close. Hooking through, setting on, and closing. Hooking through, setting on, and closing. This is another reason why I really like setting my scales up in a row first, is it helps me to kind of see where the next one needs to go. And this really helps too whenever I'm doing like a pattern inlay. It can help me kind of plan in advance instead of grabbing scales kind of haphazardly. And then also, um, I do feel like it makes it a little bit more time efficient to have everything that I need like right here at my fingertips. And also, if you need to set your pliers down to um, put a ring through or put a scale on, don't feel like you have to do everything exactly the way that I'm doing it. Um, this is, I mean, honestly, I've been making scale mail for about, oh, seven or eight years. Um, so um, this is just the habits that I've gotten into. But please, please be encouraged to uh, try a bunch of different things until you find what you like best for you. So you can see how that's starting to decrease. It kind of holds itself nice and stable. I'm going to do the next one. I know this is going to make the tutorial a little longer, but some things you can't anticipate happening. So I'm going to go ahead and keep leaving this with you, just in case I mess up in a way that I haven't messed up before, so I can show you guys how to recover from it. So hooking through, putting on, close. And through, putting on, close, hooking through, putting on, and so I mean you can really get into the groove of weaving this too. And close. Hooking a scale on. And close. And now here we're to the last one in this row. And now I'm going to straighten all the scales up to get them to lay where they're supposed to go. Now, you can see here how we're starting to get an edge. There's a lot of folks who will go through and continue to weave a chainmail edge to keep all the scales laying nicely. Um, I've found that unless you put in a ton of additional materials and work to get those edges to be completely fixed, you're still going to have some scales flopping around and sitting the way that you know you don't necessarily want them to. Um, so honestly, I don't really bother with it. Like, um, unless somebody cl places a custom order and they're very specific that they need, like, you know, absolutely cannot have any shifting in their hem, um, then I just do it regular. It helps us keep our price point pretty low. Um, it cuts down on the amount of time and materials that we have to put into each piece. And I feel like it gives the client a little bit more um, versatility with what they can do with their piece because they could go through on their own and add in more scales without having to bypass my chain mail. And that was a row of three. Now we're going to do a row of two. <clears throat> and close. 
hook and thread and close. Oops, let's see. There we are. Okay. And now is our last one for this little swatch that we're doing. <clears throat> going to open and thread it on and close. Now I am going to go ahead and show you how to finish the edges, at least one of the ways to finish the edges. So what we're going to do is we're going to come through and I'm going to finish this side because I'm still going to be expanding on the other one. But I'm just going to thread an open ring through these two so that it mimics very much because I mean from the back side here this looks a lot like European foreign one for those of y'all who weave chain mail <clears throat> so I mean and if you notice that I mean you're 100% accurate but it just it comes together a little differently but you can very easily extend with regular foreign one off of this so to do that what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn this this way um, and I'm going to hook through this ring and this ring and close it I'm going to hook through the ring we just threaded through and a new one and close it hook through, hook through, close Hook through, close. So now here we can actually flip this over and you can start to see just how pretty that is. I mean, <laughs> dragon scales, right? I mean, that's so pretty. You know, but the way that this is laying, you can see that we'll kind of still lay the way that they're going to lay even without us finishing that edge. And this is that doing just that one row doesn't really accomplish a whole lot. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to come through and weave again an additional row. So there's one. that we threaded through, so there's one, two, and close, there's one, two, and close, and this one will really help them stay in line. And close. Now you're still going to get some weird flopping on this ring over here that's unavoidable but um yeah that's but honestly the amount of time that it takes to kind of put that in and then it even still wants to shift around on its own um I don't personally find it too necessary um but to each their own and there are also a couple of different ways of accomplishing that kind of weaving pattern to like um, you could use smaller rings to get a little bit of a contraction. Lots of different ways. But I think I've shown you all pretty effectively the goal of this video. And that is how to weave scale mail. Yeah, I just like it better without because it's kind of laying <laughs> a little less um, clunky. So again, that's just me though. Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope that it was helpful to you. Um, I'd love to hear any questions, comments, and ideas that you guys have about scale mail. And um, stay tuned because this piece of scale here is actually going to be incorporated with um, a really cool 
peacock themed like peacock dragon themed I know right um <laughs> belly dance outfit and the way that I'm actually going to be going through attaching this is putting it onto a bra base and then kind of stitching through the scales along the edge so I'm going to be continuing this design it's only going to be this long but I'm going to be continuing the design across and then coming back up again in the center so if you guys want to see how that piece comes together please subscribe so you can stay up to date about new tutorials and videos and all sorts of stuff if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them as well as participate in my bi-monthly fairy house giveaway um please check us out on patreon there's a link down in the video description below um and you can go there and see all of the different pledge options and things. There's different levels of like VIP access to behind the scenes pictures, kits, materials, all sorts of stuff. So go check us out. Um, please share with your friends. Like if you have some friends that you're like, hey, scale mail, look at, um, like spread the learning, spread the love. Uh, that way, like if, if you want to support our work but don't want to become a patron, please share with your friends. That was a thought process. I'm not being bossy or anything. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I'm going to do this like a million more times because that's chain mail and scale mail are nothing if not repetitive. <laughs> so, but I'm going to put on some anime and get in the zone and make some scale mail. So I hope y'all have a fantastic day. Happy crafting and I'll see y'all around. Bye. <laughs>